Hey, it's Bob Guppy, where the Guppy is the Mub. How are you? Happy Monday. Hope your Monday was a good one. Mine was hectic. Do you have a hectic, hectic Monday? I did. Hey, buenas tardes, Edgar. Buenas noches, depending on if you had comida en la noche. Comida en la noche. Food in the night. Little, uh, little bad Spanish for you, for those sitting at home. My Spanish is terrible. So let's see here. What's going on in my world? I don't know. Just been... Uh, buenas tardes. <laughs> tardes. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I was out walking along, and somebody's listening to banda music, and so I said, ba "Musica de banda." And a Hispanic gentleman looked at me like his eyes went, "You sp español? See, si, muy mal, muy mal español." You see, that's what we do here on Mob Guppy, where the Guppy is mob. We Talk a little bit about fish. We float back and forth on uh, stuff like that. One of the things I want to get to tonight, and we'll do as more people get in here, uh, discuss about why it's important to have several tanks per strain of guppies you have. And, uh, and quite frankly, um, what the IA recommends uh, and sort of what I recommend. So... Is through time and of learning, et cetera. And, you know, our buddy Doug Gray will be here in a little bit. He knows a lot more about guppies than I, than I do. He's been doing it a heck of a long, a lot longer. But he'll correct me if I am wrong. We begin uh, at 32. Come on, Stas, how are you doing? What's up? E2, uh, it means in you. We bien means very good. Not exactly, but it's you know that's sort of uh, sort of what it means. I'm drinking diet root beer. Diet root beer. Yo bien, yo bien. And uh, so. I have actually some bad news before we get to our topic of this night. You know, I uh, banged up this arm and I ended up, they diagnosed it with tennis elbow, gave me shots and stuff like this. So I was making myself some food on Saturday. Some delicious food. Comida. Espanol there means food. And comida muy rico. And, uh, and guess what? I uh, I aggravated my uh, my tennis elbow again. Yeah, I felt like something had popped. Mom, you. Yeah, it's all good. May have to remind our buddy Doug Gray that it's Monday. And uh, and uh, all right. So I texted him saying it's Monday. Select Pat, how are you? How are you doing? Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on with Rico. Rico Stan's going to have me on. He's going to interview me uh, about, uh, I don't know, my nonsense, uh, anything that comes to mind. So that's good. It's, uh, that's good. Okay, so here's the deal. If you're tuning in. To hear me talk about uh, why you need several tanks 
uh, per uh, line of guppies. It's the man with life-size Stonehenge in his backyard, Peter Thiel. And in my house, and one of these days I'll show you guys, I have the Stonehenge the same size as uh, Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. It's, uh, it, uh, you know, it's on the way to being crushed by uh, little people. So here's why you want to have several lines of guppies. I go through and I do a pretty good job of culling, of getting fish out. Probably one of the mistakes that I make is I sometimes, just because of uh, room issues, because of other things like that, I have fish that before I usually switch around males. And uh, with my sword tails, I've begun to have uh, a few more uh, bent spines. And that's generally caused, in my opinion about this, and Doug Gray, you may correct me on it, it's caused by... Uh, too much inbreeding. So you have to start bringing in. And I started getting a lot of uh, bent spines. So I just started swapping around males. And uh, and this has been going on. Uh, I haven't had any new ones since I did the swap around of the males and stuff like that. But again, here's the deal. Is that, you know. Uh, genetic variation is pretty good, is really important, especially when you're doing what, if you're having pure strains where they're basically inbred anyways. This is exactly what happened to the Kardashian family. Yeah, it's uh, Ben Spines. Kim and uh, Kylie, especially. How many plastic surgeries can Chloe have? Just every time I see her on TV, and I don't watch the show because, well, I'm a man and I'm straight. My ex wife used to watch it a lot, she liked watching it. A lot of people did. It's, I think it's in the middle of his last season. Will I watch one just to say I did? No, I won't. I have not watched one in... Uh, I think, well, they're all pretty attractive. I think Kendall is the most attractive, in the, my opinion. She's sort of tall and willowy. Kendall Jenner. Her mother's a lady. So, so yeah, you want to keep genetic diversity going on. Now, a lot of the big international fancy guppy association breeders, there's actually a chart where essentially you breed brother and sister or father and daughter or mother and son together for about four five generations and then you swap around males or it could be females uh to a, a breeder that's obviously a cousin but it's like four or five it's like four cousins removed and so there's a little bit of genetic variable in it even though the fish are extremely related so in my simple opinion is that, uh, is that, you know, it, that's probably a real good f guide to follow. Doug, how many, do you keep track of how many generations you, you are doing inbreeding before doing an outcross with like one of your lines, just out of curiosity? You know, Select Pet, you may be a better, better human for it. I think we now all envy one person here, select bet. Mm. Mm. 
So, yeah, with the guppies, you can do a lot of stuff. You can do, uh, you can go out and do, uh, uh, you know, the feeding is really important. Hey, what's up, Vene? Yeah, that's a good thing, Doug Gray, is that, uh, you know, the colony bred ones, you switch males about every four months. Probably not a be. You go, Vinay goes four to seven generations, depending on what I see, and then breed back out. My fish tank aquatics. How are you? Hmm. Yeah, where are the crab cakes? In Maryland, by the way. If you get off the, you know, if you get off the New Jersey Turnpike, which is probably the Maryland Turnpike by then, off of 95, just a couple of miles, any place you go into serves crab cakes. Mm. Crab cakes are in your belly. Get in there. Hoarding crab cakes. It's like a crime. So, yeah, so tomorrow night I'm going to be on with Rico Stan. He's going to ask me questions and stuff. I think it's at, uh, I think it's like 5.30 Eastern time. No crab cake for you. There you go. He, he's sort of our version of... Uh, the crab cake Nazi. All right. So I think that's uh, I think that's real stream. I'm looking up to see what time I'm gonna be on with Rico Stan tomorrow. Let's see here. Yeah, 5.30 Central, 6.30 Eastern. I'll be on with uh I'll be on with our with our boy Rico Stan. So he'll ask me hard hitting questions. I like crab cakes. I like uh I would, you know, I'll tell you the place to go. And if you've never done this trip, do the main trip once. Holy capoli. Well, Siwi, you're exactly correct. More smaller tanks, easier. When you have a leaking tank, do you have a leaking tank? Ooh. The best crabs of your life, Doug. There you go. Head to, head to Maryland now. So, by the way, getting back on my diet, I was doing pretty good. Then I went on vacation. Then, you know, all bets were off. Ali Sean's allergic to crustaceans, so he's got to pass. All right. So, my, uh, you know, it's, uh, so I've been getting back 30 gallons. You have to move to, uh, move five, 20 gallons to get it, to get to it. Ah, fun. Sorry. Leaking tanks, never good. Never good at all. So I have, um, so I'm back on my eating routine. So I made uh, vegan chipotle crumbles. And I went out and did like an Asian fusion, Asian Mexican fusion. I threw on some uh, Kung Pao sauce. With veggies on top of brown rice. 
There you go. It's a, and I saved up. Uh, I am freezing up two things that I'll eat, uh, you know, two, three days down the line. I'll eat one. Then after there, and uh, it's, you know, my dinner was probably, you know, less than 300 calories. It was filling. So there you go. And it's healthy. And so, yeah, I did really well today. I uh, had some amazing stuff. Uncle Steve to the rescue. Platy fry are hard to catch. They're easier, Posiwi. I'll give you a tip. The less water in the aquarium, the easier they are to catch. Just take out a bunch of water. And once you, you can go out and corner them, you're usually it's a better deal. Turn the tanks upside down, they'll never leak. Yeah, football season's coming. One of my buddies invited me to go to to go over to his home for the weekend in Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. And he and his wife moved from uh, Raleigh to Nashville. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry you have a dirted tank. I know people that do it, and I'm not critical of it, but it just seems problematic to me. I've watched the dirted tank things, and I know our buddy Lucas does that. Doug loves dirted tanks. That's right. Next time, marbles for the fry. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I uh, I do not feel the temptation to go dirted. Absolutely not. And I know our buddy Lucas does it. Uh, I have yet to watch Father Fish, mainly because he does a lot of live streams, which is great. I do way too many and not enough videos. Um, and he uh, is on at a time where I'm usually doing something called work. Dirted water sounds like Philly water to me. There you go. Your uh, dirted tank did great. I need to do one in... Again, do you, uh, you no longer have your dirted tank select bet. And by the way, I'm not saying they don't work. And I'm not saying that they're uh, not a cool thing to do. It just seems problematic to me. Just easier what I'm doing. Love growing plants for the other tanks. I'm not grabbing fry all the time. It's great. Elizabeth, Florida Fish Rescue. How you doing? How are you? A few years back and you moved a few times. Yeah, I've given up on moving. I'm not moving. This is, if I hit the lottery or something like that, okay, I'll move. But can you imagine if you win the lottery, the epic fish room you could have? I'm well, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. What kind of fish do you rescue, Elizabeth? Florida is a mysterious place filled with... Uh, Fish from all over, uh, you know, from fish all over the place. All different fish. 
It's uh, and by the way, I, I uh, the Ohio Fish Rescue guy with all you know, basically the entire house is giant aquariums. It's uh, it's amazing. Fish room. If I had the lottery, you're starting an LFS empire. Here's what I'm doing. If I hit the lottery, here's what I do as my fish dream. Is that I would go and uh, I would probably move to the Texas Hill Country. Texas Hill Country, absolutely gorgeous. Fredericksburg, Kendall, there's a bunch of places up there. Gorgeous, great place to live. And I would build a metal building and have it designed for fish. Have it completely designed. And uh, so everything is in there, auto water changes. And I would probably start doing the thing that I've always wanted to do. Uh, God, and I've been able to talk myself out of it so far. I would probably be able to do discus. But I've completely talked myself out of that. Best LFS is when the owner doesn't care if they make money or not. If they need money to get, uh, they get desperate and do things they shouldn't or don't do what's best for the fish. Exactly. That's, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, do a rusty Wessel fish house. That's exactly correct. Yeah, the artificial light that hit the, or not artificial light, the, yeah, I think there's something to be said about that. Bob Kaler, Kaler's Aquatics and Exotics. I went to uh, Walmart twice yesterday, two different ones. There's, Sort of a neighborhood by me, not too far. It, it, it's not by me. It's about a two mile, two miles south of where I live, and it's sort of really the bad part of the town of Joplin. It's uh, the customers are pretty methy, pretty methy, but the vegetables in there are always really fresh. Don't ask me why. I uh, there's one. There's two real close to my house. I'm about right in the middle of them. And both of them, the vegetables are terrible. Sounds good, Bob Kaler. So, yeah, I generally go to, I, well, I usually go to four different Walmarts. There's something I like to eat. And... That's the fifth local Walmart, and they only have it there for whatever reason. And for whatever reason, ordering it on Amazon is problematic. It's like way more, way too expensive. It's tabbouleh, and tabbouleh, uh, it's a tabbouleh mix by Near East. You add a little bit of... Uh, I, I I just do it with the cucumber. I slice up the cuke and put it in there. Bada bing, bada boom. Tasty. They're here in the back of the pickup. That's it's. Uh, they're not tied up, are they? This nice man. He had a lot of fish aquariums. And a lot of Walmart babes tied up in the back of his pickup. It happens. Will you be featured on the people of Walmart? Kayla or me? I don't wear anything particularly too embarrassing to Walmart. I usually, you know, T-shirt, cargo shorts. Socks and sensible shoes.
Peter, uh, we are overrun with cucumbers here. If you can use any. Excellent. It's not like I need a ton of them. It's just me. Me against the world. I love the cukes, though. I, uh, you know, my mom used to do this thing. White vinegar, fresh dill, and cukes, and allow them, you know, cut up a cuke and, you know, skin it and, uh, you know, slice it, put it in there, and allow that to sit all day in the fridge. Magnificent salad. Only one is tired, Peter. Claims she didn't want to go with us, but we all knew better. Yeah. See, sometimes you just have to. Sometimes you just got to tie them up. <laughs> yeah, my fish love cucumbers. My fish are all in. All in on cucumbers. Pretty amazing stuff. You add onions and tomatoes uh, oh, to the to the cucumbers with uh, with uh, uh, you know with uh, white vinegar and delicious uh, and delicious fresh dill. Yep, no, that's good. Tasty. On the Mob Guppy live stream, you haven't quite figured it out yet. If you're sort of new to what goes on, anything can happen. Her name is Kylie Bob. They say Kylie's the hot one. I don't know if it's right, though. Chattanooga Ed, a miss again. Is he not helping you tie up the Walmart babes? Can you imagine uh, Kaler and Chattanooga Ed cruising Walmart together? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Cukes is good. I have to go to the farmer's market here. Maybe I'll go on Saturday morning. I'm looking for rhubarb. I think I'm going to make myself a rhubarb pie. Make myself a marvelous rhubarb pie. So, speaking of the fish, um, since Ed lost so much weight, the older babes desire his beard. Good for him losing weight. I'm back on the eating well bandwagon. My hope is that I can... Uh, about two years ago, I was about, about 30 pounds lighter than I am now. So I got to work on getting there. I could see them in Walmart. The aisles would be quietly uh, part in a whisper. It was the Tennessee Fish Mafia. That's right. Finoski Tanks, how you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Great having you here. You know, it's good having you here. Um, the, the fish, uh, let's see, I fed them pretty good today. They got uh, uh, two different types of uh, flakes that I mixed together. I did a little bit of uh, Doug Gray's... Uh, Food And then right before we went on, I fed them their daily portion of baby brine shrimp, which they're going nuts over. Absolutely nuts over. You can't go wrong with it. So the, um, I guess the other thing is going in, Doug Gray was bringing this up for, uh, I put this on all about uh, guppies, USA only. You'd be surprised how many people try to get in that. They're from Thailand or 
uh, Tokyo or uh, Brussels. Nobody from Brussels is getting on there. I think the Brussels people, they kind of creep me out. Did you play some Lizzo for the fish to keep them or to help them put on a weight? No, I don't. I just do it with high quality food. High quality food. If I kept eating like I was eating, I'd be, I'd be, uh, you know, I'd be a date bait for uh, Lizzo. She'd be looking at me with uh, some anticipation. So there was a concert. They did like a concert in the park this last weekend on Saturday. On you know, on Friday night, I went to two concerts. Went to one that was a little bit early, and then I went to one that was later, and that was great. And I was kind of, uh, uh, and I was out late on Thursday. So Saturday, I just said, heck with it. I, uh, you know, I made some food and I just sat at home. As it should be. It, uh, when people go out and they set up breeders for guppies, when I do a new breeders thing, a lot of times people will go out and they'll do, uh, there are a lot of guppy people that will do uh, two males and three females. Ooh, you got some more of the red high fin Venezuelan quarries today. Some uh, unique angels and visited a new online reef store that's opening here. They gave me uh, a tour and gifted you with their uh, reef food. Reef chasers, everybody. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad I haven't fallen in full on the uh, Corys and the uh, Plecos thing. Hey, by the way, has, have any of you guys seen our buddy uh, Tom Endler? Has he put out something new lately? I haven't seen him in a while. He's really terrific with the Corys. And I think maybe he's been busy or what have you. So, by the way, the number of tanks per strain. And I have a confession. I don't have enough. It's, uh, it is said, you know, like eight, nine tanks per strain. I don't have that. I, I have uh, sword tails in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven tanks, but not quite, you know, nine. And uh, you think the gift was to get you out the door? They tossed it toward the truck and, and ran. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you know, it's I, I hope one of your babes got out and grabbed it and ran it in. Chewy! lunatic fringe in the house you missed out we've been talking about how many uh tanks to do per strain uh the subject of dirted tanks came up uh i'm uh not you know cooper aquatics i'm not necessarily uh against it i haven't done it and uh and I haven't felt the need to do it. I've watched our buddy Lucas Brett's LRB Aquatics do them. Uh, you know, I, I get it. Tom Endler contacted you a few weeks ago about a brace for a 55-gallon. I sent it to him, and he confirmed receipt. Excellent. Yeah, so... Um, My uh, streaming service, by the way, I have uh, used streaming services 
for the past, you know, probably about three years. And I was on Sling for a long time. And then I moved to Hulu. Then I moved to Fubo TV. And now I am back to Sling because Fubo TV dropped uh, a couple of my favorite channels. So they dropped uh, history and they dropped a couple of things like that. So yeah, no more for me. I had to say goodbye and go back to Sling. It, uh, What animal would be hard to save in a flood, even if you have an ark? Fish! Be tough to save fish. Go ahead, Chewy. Oh, correct! I got it right, everybody. Mark it down. Mark it down. No, history is no longer just the Hitler channel. It's the Aliens channel. And uh, it's also the home of, uh, of uh, uh, Sky, uh, Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, with a, an amazing character named Dragon. Who on one episode actually said this. You guys all went to school and stuff. You're much smarter than me. In your permanent record. Thank you very much. Calgary Zoo went through a flood in 2013. Favorite exhibit got depleted big time. No digging at the ranch. Doug watches Skidwalker Ranch, and he'll, uh, I haven't had it for the last uh, two weeks, and I'm like, yeah, so I get I get to watch it tomorrow night. I'm strong. I'll, well, I'll DVR it so I can savor it and watch it at its own pace. It's amazing. The whole, uh, yeah, so Nile Tilapia lost, hippos saved. The hippos were in the same exhibit as the Nile Tilapia. Yeah. No digging at the ranch or around Chattanooga Ed's flowers. I saw Chattanooga Ed's video he did the other day uh, doing his tubbing. That was kind of nice to see. It's actually kind of a nice setup. Kind of a strong setup there. Yeah, the deal is with the hippo. Uh, Ali Sean, yeah, Skinwalker, apparently they have shapeshifters going on there. You know, hippos kill more people or more human beings in Africa than crocodiles or lions. I mean, they're pretty freaking dangerous. So you'd want to get those guys sort of, you know, set up. They've replaced it now. Not tough. It was tougher to get the things lost in the Madagascar reef tank. Yeah. A lot of times with these zoos, you know, they have sponsors uh, that help them uh, get the beasties that are in the deal. Ah, the tilapia hang around the hippos for protection from crocs. And uh, adult hippos can kill an adult croc. 
And, uh, you know, they generally don't mess with each other, except a croc will see what they can do to get a baby hippo. And because they find them tender and delicious. Well, like guppies find their babies. <laughs> You sponsored a beast once, but that's a different stream. Yeah. Hey, you sponsor a lot of uh, aquariums right now. By the way, my dog thing, my next dog. Uh, Lizzo? Um, my next dog, maybe I'll name her Lizzo. Uh, as a female dog that's going to come to me around the end of the year. Pretty exciting. The judge didn't agree. Yeah. Hold on. Let me, I got a notification. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, that wasn't interesting. If you're the song Floyd by Sellout, Caretaker, the hippo exhibit built by the guys from Tanked. Ah. By the way, I saw uh, in concert this last weekend the Black Moods and Saliva. They're good. Buck Cherry was supposed to play on Friday night. Uh, they got the COVID. They got the Rona. So thus, they didn't play. They didn't play at all. So that's sad. But uh, the tickets work when Buck Cherry comes back, you know, in a little bit. Rhinos have projectile defecation. Oh, it's like the Swedish Ramstein. Ramstein. Urgh. And if you've never heard Ramstein, people, uh, just imagine uh, David Hasselhoff singing with a metal band. It's a uh, just uh, if you need to know what that was. Yeah, it, the Germans like a certain type of voice, and David Hasselhoff, he's got it. That's what they're after. They're after that, like there's no tomorrow. So it's, uh, you know, the aquarium exhibits. Uh, hey, Bob, I have a question for you since you're in uh, Chattanooga. Select Pet, you're nearby. Um, is the Chattanooga Aquarium still really good? When it opened up, it's just going back about 20 years. I was there and it was amazing. Amazing. I love going to the the, the uh, Monterey Aquarium in uh, Monterey, California. is fantastic, and uh, that's an an incredible one to go to. The Washington D.C. Aquarium, yeah, it's not that great. It still is to it is according to Ed. Have you been there, Bob? Uh, the Chattanooga Aquarium, when I've been there, has been absolutely was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I need to go to more of them. Now that I, you know, I don't have to worry about the dog until I get a puppy. I, uh, you know, I can go, uh, travel to one. 
Not in the last uh, six or seven years, but they've added on. Okay, that's cool. I saw they did one of the best wild uh, discus setups when I was there. It was absolutely great. Vancouver Aquarium's opening up. Ed is a member and hangs out for the Aqua Babes. Yeah, you see, there you go. Show off his beard and get the ladies. Puts a hook in it like a lure. That's why I have to take off a little bit of weight. My neck just keeps moving. <laughs> they shut down before COVID for the renovations. There you go. <laughs> when I was a kid, and this went into my 20s, I couldn't stop laughing when my grandfather would do stuff like this. He would all of a sudden go, Bleh. and you know, he's like in his mid 80s doing this, and he would just do it during dinner until you started laughing. If you didn't start laughing, you just keep going. So technically, they didn't lose much, okay? You summoned Ed. All right, excellent. He explained what's going on with the uh, Chattanooga Aquarium. You say, I have your number, Bob. I don't have Chattanooga Ed's number, so I can't text him on this. I can't text him and, uh, and sort of figure this out. Is Ed awake yet? I jumped on like a few weeks ago at like 5 a.m. I had been up for about an hour or so and I had coffee going. I'm going, you know, I can't really do much yet on like a Saturday or Sunday. So I popped on and there's Ed. Ed, have you gone to sleep yet? I, I was just thinking about it. So there you go. So you can't go wrong with that whatsoever. Yes, Doug, I woke him whilst at, well, at, or whilst at, uh, the Reef Chasers before they ran me out. When I was, like, in college and I worked at a restaurant, you know what the worst thing was? Okay, the restaurant closes at 10 p.m. 9.45, people come in to eat. And they ain't going anywhere. You know, it's 11 o'clock and they're still there. And it takes them a half hour to, to uh, put in the order. Hated that. Because at a restaurant, you're only making money off the tips and stuff like that. So it's like... So here's a uh, here's your uh, your lesson for the t today. If you go into a restaurant just before it closes, make sure that you uh, you know that you order and tip well and get out quickly. Ali Sean does that. It's a. Uh, Since Ed vacated his the drinking games, his uh, DTs impact his sleep. Yeah, I've done a drink, good old drinking game since I was in uh, college. Used to, uh, you know, you know, play quarters. Back in the day, hang out with my crew, do the drinking games of shots of bad whiskey. 
or bad tequila. Because when you're 20 years old, what you're getting is not that good. I'll keep that amongst us, Bob Keeler. Drink every time you see a Subaru breakdown. I'd be drunk as hell. Constantly. My, you know, my boss got a Subaru. And I don't know, have I told you this? So I just said to him, I said, hey. In about two years, that's going to make one hell of a planter. Yep. You know, yeah, you just be... Uh, I saw one uh, on the road broken down on the freeway, not far from my house, and if I had time, I was in, the hurry to, in a hurry to go somewhere. If I had time, I would have uh, I would have turned around, took a picture of it. Kevin's Canines and Aquatics. Hello, Doug Gray, Bob Kaler, Lunatic Fringe, Ali Sean, Select Pet, Color Guppies, Ali Sean. Lumpy Dog. There you go. Lumpy Dog is here, so the party can begin. Drive the Subaru into the ocean makes a nice reef for diving. Yep. Yeah. Subarus do that. The only Subaru I ever thought I would want to get one time. I, you know, remember when I was like in college, uh, it was sort of towards the end of the Subaru Brat, which I actually thought was kind of a neat looking vehicle, a neat concept. Two bucket seats in the back, you know, where you'd, your buddies would go and uh, put them, you know, put, uh, them all set up with uh, uh, seat belts that were basically like uh, something that you'd be on a jet plane with just in case you crash. Oil and gas is great for the ocean, too. Yeah. Hey, um, <coughs> I did. I was actually running around running around on the weekend and I saw a pickup truck with three people sitting in the back of the pickup truck as the road was, as it was going down the road. Subaru is a very popular band brand for ultra runners. Not sure why must be marketing way of life sort of thing. Yeah, I think that's true. The pickup bed was so that you could recline while waiting for the tow truck. Posey, we worry you with your, uh, maybe you've left us because uh, you're link, uh, leaking tank. You usually are pretty good for a good Subaru joke. I'm strong on them. I like them a lot. Yeah, my father loved our Subaru. My dog didn't enjoy having to sit in the trunk and had a difficult time. Plen Air Ford, Peter. What is a Plen Air Ford? I'll have to Google that. Dogs can run home when it breaks down. Or the ultra marathoners can break down when it, uh, or run home when it breaks down. I 
Oh, you're scooping and scooping fish? Yeah, I know. You're dealing with that. I'm very sorry you're having to deal with that. That's, uh, you know, it happens all, you know, sadly more often than you'd think. I had the bar in the middle of a 55-gallon tank break on me. I got home, and the, the tank was, like, bowed out. So I uh, promptly lowered the water, you know, about at least a half. And, uh, and then I ran out and bought another 55-gallon tank and uh, emptied, it, emptied the one out, had a buddy help me uh, swap places, put the fish in a bucket. Yeah, it was a good time. Good times. Bob remembers Fisher body when they made horse carriages. A pickup with three hillbillies in the bed. Plein air. Ah, very good. Open air, an art term. Yeah, uh, let me tell you, it was Hillbilly Central. It was Hillbilly Deluxe. Deluxe. That is totally for sure. It's I'm out of uh, my delicious drink, but I can hold off. For digging into some water here in a second. Jeff, my cutlass said Fisher on the door frame. Excellent. Three bow front center braces separated, emptied them all as the tank bowed out quite a bit. Yeah, that's never good. Yeah, 10 gallon tanks are a lot easier to manage. Uh, no, I I have a deposit in on the new dog. Um, I won't have it's gonna be a female, and she won't be here till the end of the year. It'll be the end of the year when she arrives. And it's a different, uh, it's not gonna be quite the uh, the sissy dog enthusiast anymore. I, I'm gonna have a little more Butch, uh, a Brittany, which are uh, which are great. Seventy six Oldsmobile. Yeah, it. Uh, I sure am, Lumpy Dog. And uh, yep, you got to watch them. You got to be on top of it. That's for sure, Kevin. Kyle's mom. What, what, what? It's actually not a big, uh, not a bad deal. Sheila Brofilovsky. Kyle's mom is the biggest. As her, uh, as her uh, uh, registered name. Will Butch have merch? There you go. I don't know what to say. I'll have to come up with uh, with merch for the puppy when she arrives. They're having a litter. Um, it's uh, they haven't bred yet. I don't think the litter is technically going to be here till you know till October, and I won't see the puppy till like ten weeks. So I have to. Uh, you know, we'll work out when I'm going to get it. If she had it now, 
she had the puppies right now. Um, or, you know, like in September, I could have her at the end of November and be a nice Christmas gift. Be a nice Christmas gift all the way around. All right, gang, we've been here for an hour. I'm out of here. I got to get ready to go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow no night on Rico Stan stream. It's at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. Look forward to seeing you all there. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the dog can out drink me. Yes. Yeah, I haven't done the Zis uh, Brian Shrimp Hatchery yet. I, I, I'm not there yet. All right, gang. Adios. Thank you.